Up the floats and paint the town orange as the University of Tennessee celebrates the torchbearer, the students, the alumni, the traditions that make our hallowed hill in Tennessee a beacon shining bright. And of course, there's no place like Neyland. WATE 6 on your side has live coverage. Homecoming on Rocky Top, sponsored by the Volunteer Club and Y-12 Federal Credit Union. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of a Rocky Top Homecoming. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Lori Tucker. And I'm Amberly Carroll. We are so excited to be here. I feel like this sea of people behind us has grown so much over the last few minutes yes. even it's been incredible it's it, been awesome it is a sea of orange and white people are so mm. excited to see the homecoming parade this is such a tradition Absolutely. here and as the theme suggests there truly is no place like Neyland I completely agree there really isn't and you pull up to it and it just has this regal feel about yes. it that there's something in your blood that just makes you excited to be here so it, I'm so excited to be here with you today Lori I'm excited to be with you and it definitely is in your blood we're going to talk about your UT connection yeah, coming up a little absolutely. bit later in the newscast but first let's go ahead and tell you where we are because okay. those of you at home have a wonderful view thanks to our live cameras here we're in Circle Park at the Torchbearer absolutely. let's talk about the parade route right now right yeah it's, you know and it's going to be such a great uh, way for people to see it I love how mm -hmm. they direct it and, and everyone can see it from a different angle yeah. I mean it's wonderful yeah there's definitely a flow the parade route mm -hmm. goes down Volunteer Boulevard, and then it starts at Fraternity Park across from Tom Black Track, past the Natalie Haslam Music Center, the Art and Architecture Building, and then Stokely Hall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the judging location is just east of Lake Loudon Boulevard. Is yes. that correct? Yes. That is so interesting. And downtown Peyton Manning Pass, I mean, it, you can't get more Tennessee than that. Uh, Peyton perfect. Manning Pass. Yeah. You've got to have the parade go right. down Peyton Manning Pass. Now, this has such rich Tennessee history. Of course, we're talking right. UT Absolutely. and the roots go deep. The first homecoming was November 1916 and you are a sports fan. You know the game that was played then. Hey, I absolutely love it, and it wasn't a big um, offensive game, obviously. No. The, the score was 10-6, to 6, but of course the Vols won, as we all know. Of course. Um, but I just think it's so interesting how uh, it's developed over the years. You know, yeah. we used to have a homecoming queen, and and uh, the last one, uh, the first homecoming queen actually was Betty yeah. Walker in 1950. 1950. So cool. Yes, that was so neat. You know how excited she was. And University President Brown Ayers mm -hmm. declared Monday a holiday after that game with Vandy, the 10 to 6 score, um, to keep celebrating. You know, Ayers was mm -hmm. the namesake for Ayers Hall, the right. iconic building on mm -hmm. the hill. Absolutely. There's just so much history, I feel mm -hmm. like, surrounding this campus yeah. and homecoming itself. Um, it truly is a homecoming, I feel like, and they really play it up, and there's just yeah. so much, so much depth to it. I, thought, I feel like people don't even uh, know. And we've got so much going on. We have, like we said, the sea of orange and white behind us. Mm -hmm. And let's talk more about your experience. You guys may not know this because you're new to Living East Tennessee. Right. You just joined the WATE 6 on your side family. We're so happy you're here. Well, thank you. On Lynn. every morning during the weekday at 10 a.m. Be sure to watch. But you are a UT grad. I am. I'm a UT yes. grad, and that was a huge part in coming here. Um, my husband and I were so excited to be back home. We were actually mm -hmm. out in California, you guys. Wow. Um, and I was just telling her about a funny connection that we had out there uh, yes. while we were there <laughs> with a business owner who had a piece of the uh, uh, the goalpost the from goal the post. Alabama game last year. So cool. Displayed in his shop all the way in California, you guys. That's how deep this bloodline did runs Did you ask orange. if you could hold it? I absolutely yeah. did. I was like, I have to touch <laughs> this. I was not there. I was crying on the uh, living room floor. So. Oh, we're looking <laughs> at pictures yeah. of you as a little girl. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So Gatlinburg was a huge place that my family and I would go uh, on vacation and different places. Uh, my dad, uh, most of all of my family's from Jamestown, Tennessee. And so, you know, we grew up in East Tennessee coming here. We're from Nashville. And it's just a great place 
place to grow up, great place to be, and we're just so happy to be here, Lori. Happy yeah. to be here with you guys. We're so happy you are here. You have on the right shade of orange, and you did back then, too. You wore a lot Absolutely. of all stuff. Absolutely, we did. You know, uh, <laughs> one year, uh, my mom wanted to surprise my dad and uh, <laughs> wanted to paint. Uh, of course, we all have, like, a bonus room and computer room. Right. So overnight, my mom painted the entire room orange <laughs> and then did a border of Tennessee uh, football of the wallpaper That's up top. Fantastic. And so we had a Tennessee room, and that's where you watch football. So, yeah. Absolutely. She's the real deal, you guys. <laughs> as beautiful on the inside as she is on the you out. So and a UT grad to boot, like Thank we said. You. Hey, there's one thing that is also really special. Absolutely. And it takes people by surprise sometimes, and that's the practice of the flyovers. Right. That's a big homecoming tradition Absolutely. as well. And uh, we were just talking off cam about how loud that is. Yes. A little bit scary, but so much fun. You can see that right Absolutely. there. Their four T-38 Talon jet trainer aircraft. Again, they practiced today. It was a very quick Absolutely. practice. They are from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri. Absolutely, and it's so incredible how that this tradition, again, we go on tradition, how this yeah. just keeps going. It's great. There's another UT grad who is on our staff. Well, we have a lot, but yeah. Dominic Webster is down along the parade route. He's been following the pride of the Southland Marching Band, Dominic. Amberlin and Lori, it's a great day to be out here for the parade. It just kicked off. You can hear it, the band walking by me right now. Uh, we even saw Smokey, King Smokey. He had a crown on his head walking down just a little bit ago. But the band, 415 members strong. It's the biggest in the school's history. They're boasting a large and loud sound, something we have not heard here on Rocky Top before. Like I said, the parade just now kicking off. People are lighting the street. You can see and hear the band, definitely hear the band. They are loud. It's just the drums right now. But people are lighting the street, trying to catch a glimpse of not only the band, but also all of the floats coming down the street here in the next little bit. But I'll have much more on the Pride of the Southland band coming up a little bit later in our show. For now, I'll send it back to you guys at Circle Park. All right, Dominic, thank you so much. So exciting. I love to see the band. Everybody does. Absolutely. And Homecoming Week is really, really packed, as you might imagine, as you Vol fans know, with so many events. Chancellor Dondi Plowman is always in the thick of things, and she made sure she kicked things off Monday afternoon to start the week. Oh, yeah, hands down. And it's mm -hmm. one of my favorite traditions that they do here at Tennessee. Yeah. Um, it's it's magical. It truly is, absolutely. It is. Um, it took place at the Humanities and Social Sciences Plaza, dyeing the Europa and the Bull Fountain orange absolutely and it's such a spectacle when they first release all the orange because yeah. it's like very concentrated and then it, but it's it's really beautiful it's really unique i love it it's it's definitely one of the signs hey this is homecoming and it's here it is orange it like is you said right orange. it screams <laughs> orange there's also food um, lots of t-shirts to buy, a pumpkin patch. You know, you got to have all kinds of orange. Pumpkins are orange. They fit right in, and it's fall, absolutely, so that's absolutely. perfect. All right, where are we with the parade? Let's see if we can uh, look in a little bit and see how things are going. It's coming up in just a little bit. Again, this parade has been going on for such a long time. It's coming right All around right. the corner. Yeah, you feel the anticipation. Okay. Yes. Here we go. The MC has just kicked things off. Where we are. <laughs> Everybody's getting really quiet now, getting ready. On this big orange Friday. Mm -hmm. There's Chancellor Plowman right in the thick of things. And we're just going to let you soak this in for a minute. There's no place like Layla. Please join me in welcoming the ROTC Color Guard, led by our very own University of Tennessee Police Department. There's the Color Guard with UTPD. And the 
ROTC here on campus. So cool to watch what they do. I mean, it's amazing. The adrenaline is going when you see this. And here comes Rocky Top. Yes. Thank you, babe. <laughs> Love to try. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so these are the little ones. One years ago, a new tradition started. I love when, it. When this land played Rocky Top at Layla Stadium for the very first time, recognized as one of the oldest and Grand Marshal, Al Wilson, we're absolutely, he's a huge part of that many team. Yeah, you gotta love him. He definitely the Grand Marshal time. He really did. That was a spectacular year. He was team captain. And then you followed him as well when he went on to play pro. Absolutely, yeah. Eight years, I believe, and I was the Dolphins. And I thought that's a great That's incredible. There's the band firing it up. And I love the talent for it. I mean, it's beautiful. To be synchronized and walk like that the way, I'm not sure if I could do that. I can't imagine. I never even attempted. <laughs> but I love to watch. And it's a perfect day, weather-wise, on Rocky Top. band and I don't know about you at home but when you see the drum major strut across the field at the game wow there's nothing like it almost yeah. doing a bag then right. it's great Absolutely. Woo, here we it's go so Rocky good. Top one of the best out there I gotta say one of the best out there. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Cute as cheerleaders. Everyone representing Absolutely. Rocky Top so well. I love watching them on the sidelines. I mean, they are so talented, so athletic. They're great Incredible. athletes. Absolutely. Speaking hey, of athletes. Yes. <laughs> let's bring in our Sam Rothman. You know, when you look around campus, you take it in. You get to do this every weekend during football season. Yes. Take it away. A lot of homecoming festivities today. We'll see it on the field tomorrow. But when it comes to the actual game, Tennessee enters as a 35-point favorite over UConn. It's an 
non-conference game. The Huskies just one in seven on this season. Tennessee should easily win this game. And because of that, we should see some new faces take the field tomorrow. And one of those faces could be freshman defensive lineman Sean Davian Bradley. He had 35 power five offers coming out of high school. And once he made the decision to come to Rocky Top, it was a no-brainer. I came into this place knowing that this is where I want to be for the next four years of my life. And like my first ever time being here, I was like, yeah, this is the place for me. This is right where I want to be. And I know that mentally, this is where I'm going to have the best chance at becoming who I want to be when I grow up. And guys, when he grows up, he told me he wants to take my job. He wants oh, to be a sports broadcaster. That's great. And later on in the show, you'll see why he probably has a pretty good future in it. Because I caught up with him. We'll hear a lot more later on. Guys. That's How fantastic. about he can work alongside you? Yeah, OK. Yes. OK. We'll, we'll do a little team. Yeah, teamwork. I, I can totally see that right there. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. You, Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, earlier we were talking about Smokey Dog. Oh. I've got my pin on. I don't know if you can yes. see it. Okay, you have to tell your joke. Now. Okay, okay, I have on Hound's Tooth. Get it? Hound. Hound's Tooth. We're taking it we back. Make, Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Yes, I Hound's Tooth. I think it's beautiful. Thank I you. I love it. Thank you. I love we it. We try. It's perfect. Hey, everybody, this is the 25th anniversary of the 1998 season. Yeah. We were talking about Al Wilson. And Al Wilson, such a leader on that team and leader um, outside of, of uh, the football arena as well. And just a spectacular human being. I mean, had a long career in the NFL. Um, people love him. I mean, to this day, he does so much within the community um, and just really has a heart for this school. And it's so great to see him come back and, and be the Grand Marshal. It, it is an all around great guy. He was inducted into the National Football Foundation's Hall of Fame in 2021, well-deserved. You were mentioning earlier, he went on to play for the Denver Broncos. He had an injury, he retired in 2008. Uh, but my goodness, he continues to give back and has a big presence on campus. Oh, hands down. And I mean, he was a All-American selection from the 1998, that national title team mm -hmm. there. Um, and my favorite uh, sweatshirt I had as a kid, um, it was uh, a national championship uh, sweatshirt. Nice. And so I still have it till this day. It's about, oh, wow. you know, like 20 years old now. <laughs> but it's fantastic. And it's such a, a great vintage emblem of, of that year of 98. It was a great year, the Fiesta Bowl. And I was here then. Yes. I can we were so excited. I can't even tell you, just like everybody, we were consumed right. by that award-winning, fabulous, wonderful team. Absolutely. All right, everybody, stay with us. We're going to go to break really quickly. Yes. The parade okay. continues. But stay with us as we bring you live coverage of Rocky Top Homecoming. All right, welcome back, everybody. And we're back at the Rocky Top Homecoming Parade. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this, guys. We've got great weather. Mm -hmm. It feels wonderful out here today. The sun is shining, and there's a sea of orange. It doesn't get much better than that, Lori. It really <laughs> doesn't. Hey, you want to check in with Dominic Webster Absolutely. again? Absolutely. Let's go check in. What's going on, Dominic? Hey, Amberlynn and Lori, I've heard Rocky Top about six times in the last two minutes with all the all the floats going by. Now we've got the alumni board coming through. But I want to go back to the band for a minute. I said there were 415 of them. They were very, very loud as they walked by just a second ago. And you guys, I know you guys heard them, but I was able to speak with them before the football season even started to get to learn more about, you know, what it takes to build this kind of band. But Pride of the Southland Marching Band has been an integral piece of game days at UT for many years. This homecoming is one in a long list that the Pride is celebrating. It's only fitting this year's band is the largest ever. It, it is the biggest band we've ever had here at the University of Tennessee. 415 people. Uh, it's brought its own set of challenges. Um, we call them good problems here this year. But I think the fans will hear it and see it in, in Neyland. Over the years, there has been plenty of sound changes for the Pride. This year is unique because of how much louder it is for those watching home games in person.
I'm just excited in general, like I said, because it's a bigger program this year and we're having more people, again, to kind of introduce them to this a little bit and kind of guide them through that process. And we sound loud. So that's very exciting because it's going to be a different sound and it's a hefty sound. So I'm excited for us not only to play that, but for everyone else in Neyland and in Nashville to hear that. So that's exciting. A long-standing member of the volunteer community, Sterling Hinton, also known as Sterl the Pearl, is an added piece of the band helping to hype up the crowd during play stoppages. I compliment the best band in the land, the Pride of the Southland Marching Band, and to be a part of anything they're doing is one of the hugest honors ever bestowed upon me. Yeah, you heard Sterl the Pearl right there. This is one of the best, if not the best, band in the land. And you heard from assistant drum major Sidney Flanagan. They are large and they are loud. So make sure if you're coming out to the game tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, to get down here and watch the band walk before the game and make sure you get a ticket inside. Lori, Amberlynn. Thank you so much. That was an awesome story. I it love was. that. It's awesome how much hard work is put into these game days that goes in that sometimes, I mean, you can hear it, but sometimes goes unnoticed. You know? I know. It's it really wonderful. does. So we, we appreciate that. Dominic, yeah. thank you. Now we have our Sam Rothman back with more on that special freshman you were telling us about earlier who really has his eyes on the future. From Michigan, so after an 11 hour trip from Michigan to Tennessee, he felt that his energy shifted as soon as he got to Knoxville. And shortly after his first visit, he committed to the Vols. I caught up with the four star recruit to talk about his first year on Rocky Top. And of course, I had to start by asking about that first of all walk here in Knoxville. I don't even know what was going through my head. Um, the atmosphere in Knoxville is crazy, and I don't think there's no place in the entire country that's like Knoxville when it comes down to the stadium, like Neyland being as big as it is, the fans getting up to 110 decimals. Vol walk, even with my noise canceling headphones on, all you hear is the screams of Vols fans. It's, it's a crazy atmosphere, and I love it. What makes those fans so special? Is it the amount of them, their energy? What is it? I think it's just their, like, I think it's just their love for their, for Tennessee football in general, or just Tennessee in general. Like, I know at times on social media we have to stay off of social media because they're gonna love you when you're doing amazing, but when you're when you're not, they're gonna. <laughs> they'll um, let you know. <laughs> yeah, they'll let you know when you're not playing too good. The fans here are just, um, and, and, and all college sports in general. I don't like watching professional sports as much as I like watching college because the fans are what make it. You are redshirting this year, but you are involved on the field, on the sidelines, on the bench. We have videos of you showing off your dance moves, getting the team hype, getting the crowd hype. Why have you taken on that kind of role? Growing up, I've always, I'd always been that kid that was like, I want to do whatever I can to help. Like, uh, even in like just regular world, not even just athletics, I've always been like that person to my friends where I'm like, Hey, if you ever need anything, I got you. Like, I'm here to help you regardless. Like, we're family. So now that I'm in college, in the college football realm, these are my brothers. I'm going to do all I can to help them. And I know that it's a big deal. It's a big deal on the sidelines to be hype and give people energy because the energy on the sideline is what's going to be translated onto what's on the field. Sean Davian, what he's most looking forward to for his first homecoming. He said, I don't really know what to expect. I don't know what a college homecoming is like, but he said he is excited to figure that out and even more excited to show Vol fans why he's here because we'll probably see him on the field tomorrow, guys. Awesome. Well, he's finding out what it's like right now. Exactly. Sam, thank you. And, you know, that has to be great, but we're going to come back with more yeah. to come soon. So stick around. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. We are with Mary Jo Collins, who definitely bleeds orange. Yeah. 
You were a UT hostess, which is such a wonderful honor. And you're now a pharmacist, and you're actually, you ran over here to join us. Yes, I did. Thank you, Silas, for working for me. <laughs> Thank you, Silas. Yeah. Nice shout out there. What does it mean to be an alum and come back to homecoming and, and see this? sea of orange each year and just feel that well homecoming week is so special i mean i live locally so i come to campus a lot for the sporting events of course go ball hoops um <laughs> but i love to come back for homecoming week it brings back all the nostalgia i think about when i was a tridel and we stayed up all night pumping the chicken wire for our float um and then on friday coming out to the homecoming parade and i remember my freshman uh, sophomore year when my sister was in the band and seeing her for the first time march down the street. And that was just so special. Myra, hello. Aww. And then on Saturday, we would dress up. We dressed up best back then. Dressed and it was different than it is yeah. today yeah. for homecoming. You didn't wear cowboy boots no. then. Maybe a little more You've got them now. Than what they wear now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we Let's would dress up and go to the football games and just have a blast. Yeah, and you really had the full college experience. And mm -hmm. I think that is indicative of many students. It just envelops you on Rocky Top. You're now a member of the Volunteer Club. Let's talk about the importance of, of being a member. Well, I obviously love all ball sports. And I um, just have had a very <laughs> wonderful, fantastic time being a member. They've had such amazing events, tailgates meet and greets um they even had a watch party for the florida game this year we won't talk about that game <laughs> it's okay but it was it's, at neyland stadium past. so we got to watch the game on the jumbotron um but you know the most important thing about the volunteer club is how they give back to the players and that's really important to me i know that they go out spire goes out and helps recruit some of the best athletes in the nation yeah. and that money really helps to get those players here and it's a way for us to give back to the players that really like make all the games so special for us. Mary Jo, thank you for all you do. And, you. and that is so important to get Absolutely. these great players. Absolutely. Thank you. Are you rushing back to work? I'm going to try to. Okay. All right. Thank you so thank much. You. Go ball. Go best ball. To yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Mary Jo. Oh, goodness. Yeah, when you see people like that, and the volunteer club is so important in, in the program itself. Right. And uh, one of my favorite things about um, college athletics is the opportunity it gives uh, these young people to go to school, pursue their dreams, and, and not only uh, athletically, but academically, and where you go afterwards, and as a bold, where you make an impact. And that's so huge. It's so huge. It really is. And it's it's great discipline. And being a ball on Rocky Top gives you entree into a lot of different uh, parts of the world and the country. And I think it's, it's just a great thing. We're proud to be here to bring you live coverage of homecoming here on Rocky Top or right outside Neyland Stadium. Happy that you were a part of our coverage today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. It was a great time. I loved it. Absolutely. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. We got to do it next year. Bye everybody. Bye.